Hey everybody, this is uh, the Sinister Minister. Some of you know me as Chuck Nation 6996. Some of you don't know me at all. Hell, most of you don't know me, and it doesn't really matter. I figured I was just going to, you know, I don't make a lot of vlogs or anything on my channel here, but I, I, I can't help but uh, voice my opinion on this ridiculous uh, healthcare system we have and how it's affected me and my family personally. And, uh, you know, maybe I'll share your stories as well. I don't know. Uh, it's, 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 this Obamacare has been such an absolute disaster. Uh, I don't know who it hasn't been a disaster for. I know the low-income people, maybe, that work the system. It's working for them, but it certainly isn't working for the people who are middle-class, hard-working Americans. White, black, brown, purple doesn't matter I'm talking about hard-working middle-class uh, Americans uh, you know anybody that really personally knows me knows that uh, I run a small business I've been in business for 10 years now I have a select niche uh, business in a, in a in an industry um, and I do quite well for myself but you know uh, we're not millionaires you know, or hell, we're not even half a millionaires, but you know, we do very, very well for what we do, and you know, we try to be fairly frugal with our money and spending and balancing and you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, so, anyways, so let's just talk real quickly uh, pre Obamacare. All right, so for many, many years, my wife and I we didn't have insurance, um, decided, you know couple years before Obamacare hit you know we, we need to get insurance so you know we scouted around we got a pretty good deal through medical mutual we for both of us who were both moderately healthy I mean I, I'm overweight you know I'm losing lots of weight you know every day every year um, but that's really my only big issue is the fact that I'm overweight you know you know it's true uh, I have some high blood pressure due to the overweightness although since I've lost a lot of weight uh, you know, it's gotten much better. And my wife has, you know, a couple minor, you know, female issues, but nothing major. No major issues. So we got Medical Mutual for both of us with pretty good coverage. Uh, you know, with the prescription plan and, and all that, and, you know, uh, copay, doctor visits and stuff. It was three seventy five a month. Not bad. Okay, we had decent coverage. We got to, we were going to Cleveland Clinic. We wanted to go to Cleveland Clinic. Um, prior to that, we went to Metro and I'm in Ohio, in northeastern Ohio, and we went to Metro, which we hated. So we wanted to go to Cleveland Clinic. Cleveland Clinic is a nationally known, you know, global known hospital. So we got it. Medical Mutual, 375, Cleveland Clinic, great. Uh, start, found some great doctors. Everything was great. Uh, my wife actually got correctly diagnosed for some of her issues through Cleveland Clinic that were improperly diagnosed through uh, Metro. Great. She's feeling better. Things are things are going well. Then the Obamacare thing drops, and you know we heard all the stories. And let me tell you something: most of it's bullshit. Um, you know when Obama said you could keep your doctor, you could keep your plan. You can, you can keep your doctor. It's going to cost you, uh, but you can keep your doctor. He didn't lie. You can keep it. You're not going to pay anywhere near what you're paying. <laughs> but you can keep your doctor. So anyways, so we went, we ran it till, you know, like most people, ran it to the, to the wire till before, you know, we had a, we finally had a, you know, go through healthcare.gov or whatever. And uh, actually I, uh, I had my wife handle all this because I handle a lot of aspects of my business. And, you know, I just figured, you know, just let, you know, she's dealt with the medical and stuff over the years. Let her deal you know, get this situated. So she, um, you know, went on health care and found the plan. Turned out that a less a, a medical mutual through Cleveland Clinic, keeping our doctors, uh, the, we were going to have to pay for, for a less, a higher deductible, less coverage, that stuff, uh, 706 $706 a month. It's almost double. This is not making us happy. Like I said, you know, we run a business, but we're, you know, we're a small business. We're growing, and, you know, we're on, we have an entrepreneurial spirit. But, however, you know, 
who wants to, you know, who wants to just, you know, piss their money away, uh, you know, and just, you know, I mean, some people do. Hell, I got relatives that do that, but, you know. So, anyways, so, okay, so, 706 a month. All right, this ain't great. Coverage is not great, but we get to keep our doctors, so we're happy. All right, we get to keep our doctors. We're paying almost double. You know, we could cover it. You know, we were trying to save money, not spend it on insurance, but okay. So, you know, we're paying it and everything's fine. And in April of this year, you know, and, and we had good, you know, coverage and stuff and this, that, and the other. Well, in April of this year, uh, well, you know, obviously prior to that, my wife got pregnant finally. We've been trying to have a baby for 10 years. It finally happened, miraculously. There's a whole there's a whole reason why we believe it happened. A lot of things we changed on our lifestyle, which maybe I'll do a separate video on. Um, but anyways, we had been trying for 10 years, and she finally got pregnant. Miracle baby. So in April, uh, we had a, a wonderful, healthy baby boy. And, you know, amidst all the, you know, happiness of having the child and, and you know, you, you know, starting to get to know the kid and everything else, that's great. But then it dawned on me very shortly after he was born, like, man, we're going to have to add him to our insurance. What's going to happen with this? This cannot turn out well. So anyways, so, okay, fine. We have to add the kid, as good parents would. So we add the kid. Jacks our bill up to almost $1,000 a month. So, uh, you know, we, yeah, I, it was it was like 900 and some dollars a month for my wife, me, and a little baby, little baby boy. So, almost $1,000 a month now. Still going through Cleveland Clinic, still going through the same doctors. Unbelievable. We're, I mean, I'm living. Um... Of course, we don't really qualify for subsidies because we make too much money. So we, we, we make more than you would qualify for a subsidy, but you know what I mean? So uh, we make too much to get help, but we, we, we don't make enough necessarily to, to comfortably cover that amount of money a month. Um, but we do the best we can. And a, few a couple months ago, our business was light. And we had to we had to skip a month. We had we had it. We couldn't afford it. Um, you know, we had some other major bills that we're handling. You know, major situations that some people happen. I'm not going to go into the specifics, but you know, we got some other situations we've had to take care had to take care of that cost you know substantial amount of money. You know, legal lawyer stuff like that. Um, so we had a month. We had a miss, and you know. Medical Mutual stuff, or, you know, healthcare.gov, Medical Mutual, because they're the ones that bill us. They give you a, a month grace period. So if you have to miss a month, okay, great. So we missed a month, but we then, you know, we got back on track and kept paying. And, you know, but we, we were still a month behind in a sense. Um, you know, and we just, you know, businesses, you know, it, it's our, the business we're in, it's, you know, sometimes you're, you're up and you're down. Sometimes you're really up really high and that's great. And other times you're down. Well, we, with the, in, you know, with the kid now comes additional expenses that we didn't have before. So, you know, kid stuff, diapers, toys, this, that, clothes, whatever. Um, you know, so we have more expenses now than we had. And, we're you know, of course, we're trying to balance. So we missed the month. Okay, but we've paid additional, you know, we got back on track the following month and we're paying. But. Um, this last month, you know, things have kind of got light again. Well, um, apparently the grace period we found out now I'm, I'm on a couple medications that are relatively cheap, but I'm on one medication I've done a video for. It's called Brintelex. It's a SSRI. Um, it, you know, helps, you know, helps, uh, it's actually done wonders for, uh, a couple issues I have, which is depersonalization, derealization, which, you know, I've, had, I've made videos on, and there are numerous videos on it. Uh, again, I, I made a video recently about Brintelex and how it's helped me with my, you know, DP and DR issues. Um, with my insurance, it was $130 a month for a prescription. 30 day. $130. This is a new medicine. You know, obviously, there's no generic a revolutionary new medicine 
um, because it you know it, it surpasses the effects of Prozac and other SSRIs like that. And in fact, it's ma it's it's made me feel a lot better. It's you know as much as I was against, and you could also watch my other videos that I was against Western medicines and I fought it for many many years. Um, but you know my holistic approach to my you know anxiety and depression and stuff didn't help, and I had to seek. Uh, you know, uh, pharmaceuticals, um, and after trying a couple that didn't work, this this one did. Brintelex worked. So, anyways, that's my only real expensive medication. One hundred thirty dollars a month for a uh, thirty day prescription. Now I was able to get a coupon card, coupon code for thirty dollars off. Uh, so it took it down a hundred bucks a month. So okay, now again, not great, but um, you know making do so anyways now that we've lapsed the one month and um, the uh, so you know last month I go fill my prescription and I go in now you know same thing they, they tell me your prescriptions two hundred and seventy dollars I said, no, it's not. It's $100. It's because I have a $30 coupon card and da da da. They say, no, your insurance is coming up. It's $270. <sighs> so, anyways, we call the insurance company and they say, well, because you missed that month and your grace period to pay it off has run out, you lose your prescription coverage. I said, well, I can't get my prescription because I can't afford $270 for a one month prescription. And obviously, you know, we're kind of light uh, with, with things, you know, how do we work this out? You know, how can we, how can you guys work with us a little, help us out? They said, no. And at, by this point we owed uh, the, the, cur the current month. So we owed, you know, almost, uh, you know, uh, 900 some dollars plus another 900 some dollars. So almost $2,000 they want or they're going to cancel my insurance. I got to pay it all. Today's uh, August 31st. After today, I'm not going to have health insurance because I can't afford to pay the $2,000 that they're requiring. They're, they're demanding for me to continue my uh, coverage. Now, I've done the best I can. The real, you want to know what the real kick in the ass is about this shit? Check this out. This is great. They, and then we find out, it, it's more, it's 2,000 something, whatever. Um, it's more than it would it, when we calculated because for the last three or four months, they underbilled us. They underbilled us. They were underbilling us. So the bill came, we paid it. Except for the one month that we we, we didn't pay. But every other month it was uh, it was underbilled. By their by them. They said, here's your bill, we paid the bill, and now they're saying, Oh, we underbilled you, so we have to tack on our mistake uh, now. Now we have to tack on the mistake. And we told them, we said, No, 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 no. I said, That's your mistake. You know, that's a YP. It's not an MP. So that's your mistake. You guys need to eat that. Uh, you know, just like my business. If we make a mistake, and, you know, and it's our fault, well, we're gonna have to eat it. You know, it doesn't happen because we're pretty, pretty awesome in what we do. But you know, so we argue with them for days. Talk to billing supervisors, and they say, nope, we're not budging. I said, well, you guys made the mistake. How can you now bill me this additional? To me, that sounds like extortion. You know, I mean, I, I don't know the legalities of it, but it sounds like extortion. Like, they underbilled us. That's your problem. Your billing department screwed up. Why on earth do I now have to pay additional monies? So, you know, this Obamacare is, is garbage. I don't know who it's benefiting other than the people already on, um, Already on welfare, you know, not welfare, well, welfare, sure. I, you know, ha, I, shit, 50% of my in laws are on welfare. Listen, I've offered people jobs in my family. I've offered them straight jobs, paying them, you know, 10 bucks an hour or whatever I offered them, a, a decent rate, certainly uh, above um, uh, the minimum wage. You know what they told me? My sister in law told me this. She she they could, she said they could make more money on welfare doing nothing. 
than what I would be paying them. I'm dead serious. So even a, a tangible job that puts in puts money back into the system, they'd rather not do that, and they'd rather take. It's a sad state of affairs. And this is somewhat of a rant video, but I'm too tired to yell and scream because I have a kid, and I have a job that I work seven days a week. But I just wanted to get my opinion out there and tell my story and, you know, I don't think I certainly don't think we're in wrong we're in the wrong here, but I can tell you this that Medical Mutual and uh, you know healthcare.gov, you know nobody's helping us. Nobody's willing to help us. Nobody's willing to work with us. They won't take anything less than what we owe, which is a couple months plus their addition to that. So they pull your met your prescription. Now I cannot get my prescription. Which which helps keep me balanced, which helps keep my mental faculties, you know, balanced. Fortunately, fortunately, I have a very great. Uh, I see a therapist and a psychiatrist, and my psychiatrist gave me a month and a half prescriptions, uh, a month and a half of of Brentilex, um, you know, samples to get me through for next month and a half till I figure things out and see what 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 I can figure out because, I mean, I don't know how I'm gonna get you know these pills, but you ever stop and think about? you know people go crazy and 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 have you know violent reactions and 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 ha you know maybe some of these people that go mass murders and stuff like that do you ever think that maybe they got worked by the system couldn't afford their medicine and um you know and then snapped one day because they were off their meds simply because they couldn't afford their meds i'm not saying that's ex every case but i can tell you i know how i felt not on these medicines and I certainly wasn't you know violent and that but I was pretty depressed and I was pretty miserable and I know these pills have been extremely helpful to me and you know the idea of not having access to them simply because well, I mean I have access to them but I can't afford them I mean who can afford $300 roughly $300 a month for a prescription you know that's crazy money um, but the fact that now I'm I can't afford it um, I can't. So my my insurance is going to lapse today. Uh, I'll, what I'll have to, what we're going to have to do is, when you can, you know, renew uh, with the, you know, with the healthcare.gov. I think it's in October or November. You know, we're going to have to find a cheaper plan, something that we can afford, which means we're not going to get Cleveland Clinic uh, doctors. We're not going to get that that kind of comfort. You know, the, going to the best, you know, uh, doctors and hospital in the, in the country. Um, which is unfair because we are, we're hard working. We pay taxes and we put back into the system, but the system is just taking more from us. You know, I'm not a registered voter. I have never voted because I think the system is corrupt. I think the whole political system is bullshit. I think the two party system is dramatically flawed. I don't think, I don't believe anything any of these politicians say. Uh, you know, I don't know what the answer is. Um, I, I, you know, universal health care would surely be nice. It's been proven to work in other countries, um, or at least better yet, an affordable one. You know, who, who's benefiting from, you know, when I hear Obama say, uh, all these people now have access to, to health insurance. They all have, uh, they all have health insurance now. They, you know, they all these teen young young adults and, and stuff can get medical insurance. Well, that's great. That's more enrollees for the healthcare companies, so they're making more money. Good for them. Governments, you know, strong arming people into doing it. Because if you don't get health insurance, then the IRS taxes you. Somebody explain that to me. How the hell is the IRS getting involved in that? Um, so where where's the logic behind this? You know, again, I'm a, I'm a hardworking small business owner. I'm uneducated. I'm a high school dropout. I'm not formally educated, but I'm a hardworking individual. I built a niche business that's extremely successful. I have some workers. Uh, I have people that work with us. They're not necessarily employees because they're 1099, uh, but they're very hardworking people that are responsible as well. Um, so we've, you know, we... I just don't understand. I, I don't. Maybe it's just we, we stop and think, my wife and I, that it's just us, but we know it's not us because I've seen a few other videos on YouTube about people ranting about uh, Obamacare, but they so you don't go in any depths. It's just you know a quick 10 second rant or something. I mean, I'd like to hear more stories about it. I mean, I know we have an election coming up, and I'll be honest, I, I'm not very political. 
you know, but I, you know, or anything, but I can tell you this. I mean, the only person that's even piqued any interest in my eyes is Donald Trump, and that's only because he's he's been somewhat of an idol of me, of a successful business owner, and I've kind of modeled myself after, you know, tried to, you know, emulate some success. My father was a successful business owner. First and foremost, you know, I, I, I'm trying to live my life in his footsteps. But, you know, I, you know, be, between, let's see, uh, Donald Trump, uh, Gene Simmons, and Larry Flynn, and uh, Gordon Ramsay. Uh, those, are, those are my top, you know, business uh, entrepreneurial uh, idols, the people I look up to or look, have looked at in their lives and somewhat to some degree studied how they've, you know, gotten to where they're at. Um, you know, I'm nowhere near on their level, um, but we're very comfortable and we're very happy living in a very nice uh, part of town in Ohio. So, anyways, I'm going to try to wrap this up. I only wanted to keep it as, as short as possible. Um, this is actually the second time I've made this because I, I, I'm trying to keep my calm, but I'm extremely frustrated. And I'd love nothing more than to hear your story or hear your opinion below. Maybe there's something you know that I don't. Maybe we're doing something wrong. Maybe there's, and I'm not trying to work the system. Like I said, I got in-laws that work the system. I have, I got a sister-in-law that's been on fucking welfare for like the last 15 fucking years. She can walk, talk carry on a conversation she could work just fine she just chooses not to she's a lazy you know lazy sod you know so i'm paying to keep her sitting at home doing nothing you know i don't understand i think it's bullshit uh you know but anyways that's my obamacare uh, medical mutual healthcare.gov story and it's horrible and i'm still getting screwed uh you know, I, I don't know. I, I wish somebody would, you know, really step forward. And I love to see the people get behind, uh, would get behind, you know, how this is hurting people and how this is affecting people, especially hardworking middle class. You know, I, I can't help but think that if they took away all the Starbucks and the cable TV, maybe then people would probably rally around that kind of thing. You know, I, I, I don't know what, what it is. I haven't had cable TV in over six years. I could care less. Um, I have my own espresso machine if I want to make a ridiculous coffee. In fact, I got one right here. Made it myself. Ah, tastes just like Starbucks. Um, so maybe, maybe if, the, if we affected that, if we took that away, the stupid TV awards or stupid sports or something like that, maybe then people would rally and get together. But they certainly aren't, doesn't seem to be circling the wagons around these politicians and government when they're, when they're forcing uh, you know, people to purchase insurance. If they don't want to purchase it, don't. If you want to, fine. That's the way it's always been. What's wrong with that? You know. So now it gets doubled, tripled, whatever. And people can't afford it. And and what happens? I think it's going to be partially the downfall of society is letting government continually, you know, order us around, uh, you know. Um, but anyways, again, I'm, I'm continuing it forward, and I, I wanted to wrap this up. Uh, I, again, I don't know what the answer is. I do know the answer would be more people speaking up about this topic and... You know, sure, thumbs up, like this video, share this video if you feel, you know, it could benefit somebody else. I mean, it's it's not too dramatic of a story, but it is, you know, uh, it's my story, it's my family story, and uh, I'm sure I'm not the only one, and I don't think I am. Anyways, this is, uh, you know, the Sinister Minister, also known as the Chuck Nation, 6996, as I was formerly known. I'm going to sign off. Thank you. Have a great day, and I hope... We can make a change. And like Donald Trump does say, maybe we can make America great again. Because I know it was. It hasn't been for a while. At least, we're the, maybe we're the best of the worst. Or just the worst of the worst. I don't know. Some of those European countries, they, they seem to have it pretty well. Some of them. Not all of them. I don't know. I'm stuck in Ohio. For now. See ya.